Today, I'm taking this luxury sleeper train for 72 hours across the Peruvian mountains. I'll show you exactly what it's like to travel in the best first class suite on board. From fine dining in the various restaurants to cocktails in the lounge car, yes that's a baby grand piano, and my favourite alpaca spotting on the observation deck at the rear of the train. There's even an onboard spa to enjoy a massage whilst navigating one of the world's highest railways. So let's grab our tickets and head to the ancient city of Cusco on the ground at 10am. Well, hello, or should I say hola, and welcome back to the channel. You join me here in Cusco, Peru, where we're gonna be catching the Andean Explorer across the highlands of this incredible country. Let's head straight over to check-in. We're warmly welcomed with a familiar and flawless Belmont hospitality, all whilst our bags are whisked away to our new living quarters. I also spot the on-train medic, vital to support those suffering from altitude sickness. We're travelling on some of the highest tracks in the world, so that oxygen will most likely come in handy. More on that later. It's not long before we're presented with a welcome drink. Chica Morada, I think. Made from black maize and fruit. It was, uh, interesting, but a must try. Millie, Hi. welcome back to the channel. How you doing? Hi, good. Are you excited to be on this? Yeah, enjoying the live music. Millie isn't wrong. It's a fabulous spot of pre-boarding entertainment, and they even have some of the passengers involved with the traditional dancing. Don't worry, you're spared from my dancing for the time being. At the strike of 10.30, boarding begins promptly. We're told to report to the piano bar, where we'll be furnished with yet more drinks and told more about our epic journey to come. Almost as soon as my first sip, the train lurches into action. There's no hanging around here, and we begin to crawl out out of Cusco, heading deeper into the Andes. The train manager, Arnaldo, warmly welcomes us all, explaining in detail our itinerary for the next three days. So, as we sip our champagne and the carriage fills with the sound of the baby grand piano, let me explain the route we have in store. We'll head southwest, leaving the ancient Incan capital behind us, bound for our next stop of La Raya. As we sleep, we'll head to the stunning Lake Titicaca. From there, we'll head to the Satacocha Lagoon, highest part of our journey at 16,000 feet. And then our final day on the tracks will bring us to our destination of Arequipa. Quite the journey then, and that's not taking into account the Peruvian cuisine, of which I'll need to pick my lunch options. Now we're on our way, we're escorted to our suite, located a couple of cars back from the piano bar. Here we are then, suite one. Uh, I mean, wow. We're not quite back on the Orient Express, but we're not far off. This is pretty spectacular. It's amazing. What's your first impressions? It's more modern than the Orient Express, but yeah. still got that amazing wow factor. High praise indeed. Well, let's take a look around our 13 square meter suite, which we'll call home for the next 72 hours. As far as train rooms go, this is up there. The centerpiece being the gorgeous double bed adorned in fine Egyptian cotton. Further back, you have a small seating area, though to be frank, you'll want to spend most of your time on the far comfier bed. The room boasts an ensuite bathroom, complete with shower, which I'll show you in more detail later on. In terms of storage, there's a mid-sized wardrobe, chest of drawers, and safe for your valuables. Naturally, there are multiple power outlets, but sadly, no USB ports. There is also a party piece. This trap door to the left of the bed, lowering it provides a view out the other side of the train, but alas, also people in the corridor. In all, it's a stunning suite and refreshingly contemporary compared to the more traditional rooms found on Rovers Rail or the Indian Pacific. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm ravenous. Let's grab the keys to our suite, and as demonstrated by the lovely Millie, our room is lockable, unlike many comparable trains around the world. It's about a four-car walk to lunch, served in one of the two restaurants, Munya. There are a variety of seats to choose from, but suite guests get a set table in the more private section of the restaurant. Everything is flawlessly presented, and aside from the occasional rocking, you'd be mistaken to have walked into a Manhattan high-end bistro. As we both sit in awe at the ever-changing spectacular scenery sprawling out in front of us, the show begins. For our appetizer, we're served joint corn and cheese. You don't get this sort of sweet corn down Tesco mind. It was delicious and well-balanced in flavour. 
After a short interval, our mains are presented. Millie went for the seared sea bass, whilst I chose the veggie option for once. Both were outstanding. I think we're going to be well looked after on this train. To close, we served Cara Cara Orange in cardamom syrup. I can't say this is my favourite, but it's made up for by some brownie petit fours served afterwards. We must now rather hastily head back to our suite, because we have an appointment to make. Now we've actually had to cut lunch a bit short, and the reason for that is we have a massage booked. Now I know you might be thinking, oh, are we going to have a massage in the room? But no, they have an onboard spa, which is frankly crazy. Not even the Orient Express has that. As we hot foot it to the pick a floor spa car, it's time for a quick word from today's video sponsor, Morning Brew. Morning Brew is a free daily newsletter delivered to you Monday to Sunday. It gets you up to speed in business, finance, and tech news in just five minutes. Before I subscribed to Morning Brew, I started my mornings aimlessly browsing YouTube and TikTok. But now with Morning Brew, I get a summary of the day's stories, which are really informative. For example, I just learned that business travel bookings have grown 6x for the next quarter, showing perhaps a shift away from those web calls and a need for in-person FaceTime once again. I guess that means the airports are going to get even busier. If you're interested in business, finance and tech, there's no reason not to subscribe to Morning Brew. It's completely free and takes less than 15 seconds to subscribe. So sign up for free by visiting morningbrewdaily.com forward slash trek trendy or by clicking the link in the description down below. The spa is quite unlike anything I've seen on a train before. We're warmly greeted as we sit down at reception to complete the formalities. There are a number of treatments to pick from, but remember, these are all at an additional charge. I'll explain exactly how much in just a second. Millie and I are led to two separate treatment rooms as we both prepare for our first massage on the move. I've chosen the 60 minute altitude massage, so I hope that tames my mild altitude sickness. I'm sorry, where am I? What time is this? I feel like a totally new man. As we both come to with a refreshing cup of tea, it's time to settle the bill. It cost $130 each, but thanks to booking via my friend Jarvis, one treatment was pretty much free because of the provided onboard credit. Back in our room, it's time to change. Afternoon tea is being served on the observation deck. Wait, this is a little busy for my liking. Ah, the magic of editing, but thankfully a better perspective of this incredible space. I'd say it can comfortably accommodate 12 to 15 people, with the best spots being the rear of the carriage. I indulge in the obligatory cappuccino, they do have a proper espresso machine on board, and this may very well be my most scenic coffee to date. As the last of our drinks are consumed, we begin to slow as we've arrived at our first stop, La Raya, a tiny hamlet adjacent to the railway with a population of just 200 residents. Let's get off and explore. So this is the very highest point of our journey today. I'm not sure if it's the highest point of the entire journey, but we're currently at 14,000 feet in this tiny little village. Despite my altitude specific treatment, I'm certainly feeling the altitude here. The short walk over here leaves me breathless, but my word, it's worth the discomfort. What a place. I have, however, lost Millie. We'll check the little church first. Nope. Ah, uh, what am I thinking? There's a market here. Of course she's shopping. As with any market, they're eager for a sale, but I respect the hustle, especially when a luxury train arrives into this tiny village. The crafts on sale are beautifully made, and we're certainly not the only ones making a purchase. It's time to head back on board, as I can't say we're eager to make the population of Larea 202. Imminently, dinner is served at the restaurant, which looks stunning this evening, matched by the impressive menu of course. We're served some delicious focaccia bread, whilst our pumpkin cream shot arrives at the table. As we continue our trundle, this time past a somewhat busier town, our appetizer is presented, the tortellini. It's hot but very tasty, albeit quite a small portion. For mains, Millie went for the blue cheese risotto, whilst I went for the steak. Of course I did. Cooked rarer than I'd usually opt for it, it tasted delicious, quite the feat on a moving train. 
to close were presented with the chocolate texture, which admittedly is more sorbet than chocolate. Nevertheless, the flavours contrasted wonderfully. With that, it's time to head back to our suite for sleep. As we've been gone this evening, the room has been turned down for us. I love the small touches like the slippers laid out and the fresh dressing gowns hung up for us. Quite weary at this point, it's time to boot off my Tims and head to the bathroom to change and brush my teeth. Much better. Now let's go try out this bed for size. And with that, it's good night from me. And good night from me. Yeah, that sounds a lot cheesier now that I've edited it, but hey, we move. Night all. The next day. Our alarm rings out at a disgusting 5am. This is not cool one bit, but it will be worth it once we're dressed up warmly. I'm rocking my new llama hat, and Millie has her new alpaca wool fro. So where exactly have we arrived into? This, ladies and gentlemen, is Lake Titicaca, the world's highest navigable lake at 12,500 feet. Our intention for getting up at this hour is to catch the sunrise, of course, which appears to very nearly be rearing its head. Lake Titicaca is also split between Peru and Bolivia. Finally, the beautiful golden rays of the morning sunshine billows into view, drowning us in much needed warmth. The staggering thing about our location is the tracks run directly up to the shoreline, presumably to allow for easy crossing over the border to Bolivia by ship. Anyway, I'm in need of some more warmth, and what better way to get back on board and grab a shower? My thought is also that with the train being stationary, it should be a more enjoyable experience. As far as ensuite train bathrooms go, this is great, but quite compact. The shower itself is quite utilitarian, but delivers great pressure and most importantly, it's consistently warm unlike some trains. Not looking at you, Caledonian sleeper. Refreshed and rejuvenated, it's time to head to breakfast. Back in our usual table, let's check out the menu. Overall, it's impressive with quite the variety of options to choose from. We're promptly served some freshly baked pastries, which are incredibly flaky and a little overdone, but I appreciate the effort that they've gone through. Though what they smash out the park again is the cappuccino, which is just what I need to wake up this morning. So what have we gone for? Well, Millie went for the plain pancakes served with maple syrup, whilst I go for the custom Trek Trendy fry up. They did initially forget the avocado, but this was brought out upon gentle reminder. Overall, a tasty breakfast with a variety of options. But now it's time to head out and explore Lake Titicaca. For this morning's excursion, we're split into three groups, and we're Group C. After a quick intro, we're led over to the marina where we'll catch our boat. Next, we speed out in convoy to the heart of the lake, because we're about to experience something special and unique to the area. Introducing the Eurus Islands, populated by the indigenous Yuru people, an entire community living out here on these artificial islands. We're introduced to the island chief, and our guide explains how these islands are constructed entirely of Totora reeds. It's really only something you can truly appreciate by air. Do you see what I mean? It's quite unlike anything I've seen before. Certainly a fascinating place, but I'm reminded that we have a train to catch, so let's head back to land and get back on board. Upon arrival at the platform, we're presented with a cooling towel, which is most appreciated. Whilst it was cold this morning, it's heated up significantly this afternoon. Now I'm sure it doesn't surprise you, but it's lunchtime. We're told we'll be eating in the other restaurant, which is located past the kitchens, offering a rare insight into what it must be like to cook on board. Quite the feat if you ask me. Welcome to Restaurant Llama, which features a different layout to Muna. Time to check out the menu then. No options per se, and given I'm not the biggest fish eater, let's dive on in and be adventurous. First up is the cream of mushroom soup, and I'm not the biggest mushroom fan, but this was utterly delicious. The addition of red wine makes this a rich and complex dish, which I enjoyed immensely. Next up, the trout. Again, not something I'd usually pick, but I'm pleasantly surprised. The trout is delicate and works well with the Peruvian staple of quinoa. With that, we're back on the move again, heading for the highest part of the journey at some 16,000 feet. To take my mind off that, dessert is served, and though a little gelatinous, tasted fresh and flavorful. To close, I order a coffee, but for some reason decide it's a great idea to have this at the observation bar. A treacherous journey for the poor cappuccino. Thankfully, it's delivered to its new home safely. It's a shame it's always quite busy here, as with the outside space at the back, though it's definitely the most atmospheric and comfortable common area on the train. Of 
course no visit here is complete without enjoying the outside deck, a truly magical space to unwind and spend the afternoon. And yes, this is where said alpacas are spotted, grazing in the sunshine, among of course other livestock. As it begins to get colder with evening on the way, let's head back inside and talk money. How much was this experience then? Well of course it's reassuringly expensive, but compared to other trips like this around the world, dare I say it, it's alright value for money? Back at the suite, it's time to get changed, and given my scruffiness at dinner last night, I'm keen to whip out my sports jacket this evening. A few moments later. Oh, now that is much better. A little bit smarter this evening, don't you think? Well, we're missing two very important ingredients for tonight. Ah yes, and most importantly, the glamorous Millie. Let's head back to the Llama restaurant for some food. I'm really impressed with the diversity offered on board. Each meal has been thoroughly thought through, and whilst they might not all be my first choice, I love being pushed out my comfort zone with food. We'll start with some drinks. Whilst Millie is enjoying a G&T, I'm sticking with a ginger ale this evening. The bread basket is wheeled out, and naturally I select a sun-dried focaccia, and our amuse-bouche of lime bean cappuccino is served. I personally found it quite refreshing, though my date tonight didn't quite share this view. Thankfully, the appetizer redeemed itself for Millie, and the freshwater prawns went down a treat. For Maine, Millie chose the duck, whilst I go for the ravioli. This is divine, and the proof really is shown here. For dessert, we're served custard-filled limes. Now, I love the ambition here. It's definitely an impressive dish to create on a moving train. Unfortunately, neither of us are really sold on it, but hey, it can't all be to everyone's taste. As this is our last night, we decide to head to the piano bar. We had hoped this would be bustling with activity, with, well, some live piano, but alas not. Instead, we both enjoy a nightcap, though I can't really argue ginger ale as such, and I decide to teach Millie how to play chess. It's something my late granddad taught me, and I'm so glad I can share this with Millie. I did win though, whoops. So we've just arrived back in our room to have it beautifully made up. But there's actually a couple of gifts because of course this is our last night. Of course I've got my glamorous assistant Millie to show me exactly what it's like. It's lovely, it's a perfect hold all size. It's got little feet at the bottom and it's got Belmont all in the lining. Look at that. I feel a QVC job is beckoning Millie. With that let's head to bed and I'm feeling pretty tired given our really early start. So with that sees the end of another lovely day on the rails, although we are at 14,000 feet. So the effects of the altitude is definitely there. So with that, let's go get some sleep. Good night all. A little less cheesy tonight, don't you think? The next day. I awake at the ungodly hour of 5am again, but there is again a reason behind this madness. We've arrived at Satakocha Lagoon, our highest part of the trip at 16,000 feet. Bear in mind this is only 1,500 feet off Everest Base Camp, so that really gives you some perspective as to just how high we are. Well, a beautiful good morning to you all. Um, welcome to uh, a pretty stunning place. Uh, given our current altitude, it makes any kind of physical exertion about 10 times harder than it should be. However, very much worth it to see this incredible view of where we are here. Uh, we are literally in the middle of nowhere. The sun should be coming up in about I reckon about 10, 10 minutes time. Um, I've left the lovely Millie in bed. Um, she's uh, still getting some shut eye because it is a, a pretty hideous time to, uh, to be up two days in a row at 5 a.m. But uh, there we go. What a magical place and certainly worth the early start to see the sunrise. Now for the precarious yomp down the hill and back onto the train for an earned extra couple of hours snooze. During my nap, we get back on the move again, as this morning we'll be exploring the ancient Sunbay Caves. Sure enough, we both oversleep breakfast, whoops, but it means that we've arrived at our last excursion. This stop sees us at a slightly lower altitude of 14,000 feet, but there's a lot more physical exertion required to reach the caves. Let's get hiking then. It's around 15 minutes down to the caves, but of course harder at this altitude. 
finally we reach the bottom of the canyon. So what's the deal with these caves? Well, they feature paintings from many thousands of years ago, around 8000 BC to be exact, utterly bewildering. As we begin our ascent back up to the train, the medic is called to support with oxygen. Altitude sickness is something you should never underestimate at this height and it can affect anyone, young or old, irrespective of fitness levels. After our yomp back up to the train, we're met by a lovely sight. A refreshing cool towel, of course. Much better. As I climb back on board, I notice a plaque bolted to the train. There's actually a history behind this train, which you might not know. It's originally from Australia and used to be the Great South Pacific Express. It operated from 1999 through to 2003. In 2016, however, the rolling stock was shipped to Peru, as Belmont intended to run these as a new service. And of course, that's become the Belmont Andean Explorer. Back on train, we're treated to a questionable lemon drink. Now, I didn't really mind it, but Millie and I agree it tastes identical to Lemsip. Jokes aside, we're promptly back on the move again and continue our journey onto Kolka Canyon, one of the deepest canyons in the world, by the way. I make it lunchtime. And to make up for that odd lemon drink, it's time for some DC. You knew it was coming. And this is served with some delicious fresh bread. Now for the main event. To start, we have the potato cream confit potatoes and parmesan foam. An ambitious dish, that's for sure, but it was really tasty. Now for the main event. Millie went for the mushroom dish, but well, not my thing as you know, I therefore opted for the suckling pig, which was absolutely incredible. Super tender and a fitting end to our culinary flight these past few days. As we continue ever further down in altitude, it's announced we'll be arriving into Arequipa in the next hour. We'd packed our bags earlier and these will be delivered to our airport transfer at the station. Instead, we'll head straight to the piano bar to enjoy some of the lovely music by the talented on-train musician. We promptly return the key to our suite and naturally have to sign the guest book. Be sure to check this one out if you ever do ride this train in the future. Finally, after three days on the rails, we roll into Arequipa Station, stomachs full and to the brim with incredible memories of this once-in-a-lifetime trip. Well, with that, welcome to Arequipa, which sees the end of our incredible journey across Peru and, of course, the wonderful time I've shared with Millie. So we have had an amazing time on this train and I hope you've enjoyed joining us along for the journey. As always, do let me know what you think down in the comments below and I'll catch you all again next time.